It's Witch Angel. <laughs> Witch Angel and the Cora. Sorry, I, I stumble over my own lines sometimes. <laughs> and welcome back to Pester Quest. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that intro. And, um, we're back in this. And y'all know what's about to happen. We're about to go hit up our favorite, favorite legislaturer, Terezi. That blind chick with the ability to taste and smell her way around the world. <laughs> But for some reason, her favorite thing is red things like, like fruit punch soda, red fago, tomatoes, stuff like that. Here we are, a fair trial, and we have a lemon snout in the background. <laughs> it's a cool, breezy evening. Violet leaves crunch under your feet as you stroll casually through a dense and inviting forest. Not an environment you're used to on this planet, that's for sure. You should be lapping up the serenity like a thirsty dog at a zen fountain. Instead, you're brooding. So many new friends, all of them a special breed of sad. You don't like seeing sad people, so you've done everything in your power to fix them. Slumber party, matchmaking, throwing a giant spider into a volcano. The smiles your new friends greet you with are all the proof that you need that you've been doing good work. And yet, you can't help but wonder how much of a difference any of this really makes. Especially on Alternia. You've gathered that even if one of these kids avoids being murdered by an insectoid eugenics robot, they'll just wind up conscripted into a lifetime of military service under a colonial empire. Which makes it really hard to believe that inducing a few bats of revelatory catharsis will ultimately amount to much. We're only two minutes into this and I'm already using a lot of big words. And we got a thesaurus! It's a depressing thought, and you're not entirely sure what to do with it, which is why you came out here. Nothing better for the soul than a nature hike, right? Maybe better, maybe after a nice long walk, come out right as... Hey, is that a treehouse? Hmm. Ouch. Ouch is right, criminal! <gasps> Great, more shenanigans, and a very familiar sharp-toothed smile. You won't lie and say the prospect of making friends with a spooky shark and glaringly red shades isn't appealing, but criminal doesn't leave a great taste in your mouth. When you try to move, well, you don't. Because when you're tied, you're tied to a chair. Strike two on bad, the bad taste scorecard. Probably shouldn't stick around for strike three. In a matter of uncharacteristic self preservation, you close your eyes and attempt to zap away. But you can't. Your head hurts and your vision is kind of it's still kind of hazy, which might imply brain damage on account of your surprise winging. With your luck, that probably means your superpowers are permanently broken. Typical. Looking up after your captor again, you can't help thinking the specs are a bit extra. What kind of lizard wears big angular sunglasses like that anyway? Who wrote this? Have you ever watched Gurren Lagann? Hmm. You certainly be one to judge if you had the legal authority to do so. A fashionable dress like that was blind as deliciously red as yours. The hypocrisy on you stinks like a fragrant pus. Gross. Jeez, what is up with these aliens and their hang-ups about blood? <laughs> hang-ups. Gallows humor is an admirable quality. But such crowd-pleasing theatrics will not spare you from the full weight of... Terezi, I love you! <laughs> What's funny is I have a cane to help me with my walking because I have bad legs. She has a cane to help her with her blindness, so that's really cool. <laughs> also, I know she's like a she's like a little bit chubby, I think, or it might just be a baggy t-shirt. But she looks so adorable in that! <laughs> and I really want to get a custom cane to match hers. Cause that freaking dragon on top. My cane's just like boring brown and silver. I want to get like a custom top put on it. <laughs> a bizarre tableau unfolds before you: stuffed dragons and benches, big angry monster, empty noose dangling ne next to a window. Looks like you've just wandered into a courtroom drama. Much to your relief, your kidnapper isn't a shark, and you have to admit the glasses do come together in the ensemble. But 
Hannah instead is a short, stocky troll girl in a short sleeve troll neck and a pair of garish red crocs. Terezi, girl. You need to get some different shoes. I'm sorry, crocs are ugly as sin. <laughs> but the ironic is, the Wiccan don't believe in sin. And we believe in karma. But that's mainly it. The fashion on this one is staggering, especially with the. Is that a sword king with a dragon's head? It is, because I'm blinding cool. Dang right on that. But make no mistake, I don't need eyes to smell how guilty you taste. Wow. Is there a sense that the Temple Doll of this troll's mouth going to be weird and uncomfortable? Yes. But not from you, cherry cheeks. His, on his honorable tyranny will only tolerate so much banter before holding you in contempt. For those of you who don't know, he's like the big cheese when it comes to, uh, uh, courtroom stuff. He's like the judge, jury, and executioner all in one. More or less, if you're guilty, you automatically get killed. You might be developing some contempt yourself, if you're being honest. Well, unless you want to be squeezed until your organs burst from your eyes, you can can, you'll bet you can the back talk and let the prosecution get to work. Is that what being held in contempt means? No, it means if you're hold if you're held in contempt, they will put you in a jail cell until the trial's over. Mm. Fine. I guess I'll be polite and stop interrupting. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Right. Now that we have the preamble out of the way, there's a ding from her computer, and her posture immediately switches from confident to frustrated. Ugh! Hold on. She strides over to her husk pop, tapping the gleaming edge of her cane in front of her as she goes. You wonder what kind of miraculous accessibility contraptions exist on this planet that a blind person can just use. Is she licking the monitor? Yes, she is. She reads through her tongue and sees through her nose. You must know. Yep, she's licking her filthy freaking computer monitor. Just lathering it up with her teal tinted saliva, going at it like a husband greeting his war wife after 20 years at sea. Why? Sorry, give me a second. No problem, you say. No, like you're going anywhere. <laughs> okay, she's distracted. Now would be a great time to go somewhere, but your powers still seem to be on the fritz. But you think the weight of your incredible butt might shatter this chair if you can get some leverage. Uh, let's try. Mmm, give him leverage this time. You lean forward under your feet, take a deep breath, and then hop backwards as hard as you can. It worked! You scramble out of the broken chair as your captor turns towards you. What the frick? You try to run, but the rope still around your legs has other plans to trip. Try to get your weight, fail, and just sort of let the momentum of your vaudevillian tumble carry you across the room. You slam into your captor and send both of you flying out the window. All is way higher up than you thought. You grab on her and pray for dear life. Hey, you're not falling. That's a relief. You congratulate your agile friend on her quick reflexes and grabbing hold of... Oh. Oh, no. You've heard of a hung jury, but this is ridiculous. The prosecution rests in peace. Oh, no! Terezi! Alright, I used a little bit of time magic myself, and we're gonna just wait it out. And if we get leverage, we're gonna end up killing our favorite t teal blood, you know? So let's wait it out. He decided to, it's best to wait it out. The sordid noose are a bit worrying, but with the plush toys and chalk drawings, it all strikes you that this is probably the closest thing Alternia has to a tea party. Which would be adorable if it wasn't so depressing. Which, you know. Playing along seems like a prime friend making activity. Besides, who ever got hurt in a court of law? Have you not watched Law and Order? Or at least watch Court TV? After a few brusque pee strokes, she strolls back to her place in the center of the room. Not a word and half a sweep, but now she won't shut up. You have you asked who she was talking to. Just some dumb angry girl who needs to leave me alone until the heat death of the universe. <laughs> who even cares anyway? Not me, that's who. Where were we? Crimes. Crimes! Hmm. 
I love the little, uh, smileys she makes. She's so cool. I love her. We are here today to face the highest justice under my authority as Premier League affiliated legislature in training of His Honorable Tyranny's Court. And it, was, and it is said with good authority that I accuse you of that most grievous of crimes against the Empire of her imperious condescension. Uh oh, what crime would that possibly be? Breaking and entering? Doping with a clown? Yeah, I guess she could technically nail you down as an accomplice to murder, but... The crime of... EXISTING! Wait. To her, existing is a crime? Terezi. Miss Pyrope, if I may... Approach the bench. I've been alive 30 years. And... Even though I see people on Twitter and Instagram joke about this kind of stuff, I do not want to die. So, Miss Pyro. Trezzy! Let me out of the chair. Please. You know you're my favorite tail blood. I got another pair of tail blood, but she's in a different timeline. <clears throat> uh. What? Don't wait for the other shoe to drop, but the dang thing seems to be stuck up there. What did she say about it being in training? You're beginning to wonder if this, uh, what did she call it? Slay the prosecutioner, public dexterpidist? You're beginning to wonder if this murder liar actually knows what the hell she's talking about. <laughs> Surprise Pikachu face. <gasps> <laughs> You think I'm making this up? Do I really look like the kind of girl who would randomly commit unprompted and unjustified murder on a whim? Look, you've met some pretty weird freaking trolls on this planet, and they all seem to have a pretty laissez faire attitude about murder. So. No, you know what? Fine. Can I be a pedantic snot nub little wriggler about it? I'll just recite the whole fucking law verbatim. Article 5, sub, sub section, yeah, it's subsection, 11, paragraph 68, of the second new codes of Alternian, oh, sorry, this, her quirk's a little awkward, so it's jurisprudence, 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 I have no idea, <laughs> it's so confusing. Describes your crime as being, having been, or prosecuted. Possessing the capacity to be in need of um, matria. Mate, okay, I'm gonna say it in my real voice. Being, having been, or possessing the capacity to be in need of matrical resource consumption for the purpose of curtailing biological expiry, aka existing, in, of, around, or through imperial territory as one of unclassifiable sanguination, sanguination mutant. One of extrasolar origination, alien, or one who plans to commit, has committed, or may possess the capacity to commit high crimes and fish demeanors against her imperial, imperial condescension, aka criminal. But yeah, I see the uh, fish pun there. Fish demeanors, nice one. <clears throat> there, happy now? Dang, this girl really knows her stuff. But yeah, it took me a while because her quirk involves using, uh, numbers. <laughs> of course I do. I'm not some fly-by lunar cycle troll slaughter consultant. I'm a freaking professional. Clearly. How could you question her expertise on the subject of what is and what is not technically a crime? There's so many books piled up haphazardly. You definitely are existing as an alien after all. And that, yes, that does by definition make you a criminal. And by the look of that noose, you doubt the punishment is be something as quaint as being thrown in the slammer. So is there an appeals process, or...? She springs forward with surprising agility and presses her face right against yours, snipping you with alarming enthusiasm. Your game of candid, ap candid apple ignorance may convince the pan scrambled clown frickers in the cheap seat. But I smell the deception dripping off you like a delicious marmalade. You'll have to do a little bit better than this if you really want to. She sniffs. Want to. She sniffs again. 
Did Kanaya make this dress? Oh, look! And out! <laughs> yeah, you say. You and her are great friends. The best! You think she should message Kanaya right now to clear all this up? You know, like a character witness? I've witnessed a character plenty, and it's bland as they come. Huh. Huh? That's not certainly not the worst contemplative noise you've ever heard. I may have misjudged you. If you tell anyone I said that, I want to cut off your arm and use it in a fingerprint bulges on your face until you bleed to death. You decided that keeping this pointlessly mundane secret is definitely in your best interest. So does that mean you're free to go? Not so fast. Me have implies possibility, not certainty. Maybe Kanaya gave you this dress because she likes you. Or maybe you pressured her into it circumstantially. Maybe you're a dare delightfully clueless and will be well intentioned interloper from beyond the stars. Or maybe you're sent here as a sleeper agent to learn all our weaknesses so that the entities control you, telling you could sabotage our future. In cases such as these, I know the best course of action is to leave the verdict a chance. She produces a double headed double headed coin with one side scratched out, and you immediately know where this is going. Oh yeah. She has the two faced coin, and it's an alternian coin I might add. The terms are simple. Heads and I release you from your bond. Tails and I release you from, from being alive. Is she really about to take you out like a gangster who just betrayed the duality theme mob boss? Before you can request a last Saturday morning cartoon solution, she flips the coin into the air. Well, this is bad. It's bad and it kind of makes you angry. It doesn't make sense. You didn't do anything, but here you are with a 50 50 chance of getting mercy. Marked by a jovial gremlin anyway. Do you think this is normal? Your head is clear enough that you could zap away if you really tried, but... Something about this murder lawyer is stuck in your craw. Her devotion to justice is obvious, but the twisted and brutal justice. Extremely for violence and painfully eff efficient in enabling exactly that. If this mock trial is anything to go by, this is the same system that requires insectoid eugenics robots to keep the peace after all. There's so much wrong here, and she doesn't even see it. How can she? How, how can she not? She's blind. Like metaphorically, see it. Okay. The coin is falling. Every rotation brings you closer to a fate that, regardless of outcome, wouldn't be fair. You decide to think about what should be fair. Just like that, you're standing next to her with a scream. You snatch your coin out of the air and hurl it full force out the window. My coin! Sorry, you shout, but she can't expect you to just accept the whims of chance if your life is on the line. Why not? Because it sucks. It's lame and dumb and really cliche. What is she, a comic book villain? Am I supposed to know what that is? I swear, Torrezi looks just like me, except her hair is, like, short. Like, she's got the, the stocky shoulders, the stocky ch chest, and the stocky belly. Just... This is what I would be if I was a troll, but I'm not blind. I actually wear, like, glasses, because I'm 20-30 in both my eyes. And I got a cane to help me walk, but she got a cane to help her see. So I'm basically, like, Terezi in a different universe. Am I supposed to know what that is? You don't know. Troll culture seems to have a lot of really arbitrarily similarities to human culture, and it's honestly very confusing, but that's beside the point. The broad sweep of your arm, you gesture her with drawing her on or the honorary Tyrannosaurus or whatever, and ask what he would think of your little stunt just now. Pfft. The trial isn't for him. We well, act like it is, but everyone knows he's just a big, hangry monster. Huh? And who? It's for the audience, obviously. By the time you make it to the stand, you're basically dead already. Don't the accused get a chance to defend themselves? Defend? Ha! Only the outrageously guilty would ever think to defend themselves in a court of law. Wow, that's freaked up. What's the point of even having a trial then? It's not the sheer pleasure of watching all the hub slowly drift from someone's eyes as they confront their Im immensely approaching and inevitably gruesome execution. Yeah, besides that. It's a warning to the... Uh... Is it... 
I have no idea what this word is. Uh, S E D Sedulous? I think that's what it is. Of what happens when they cross the line. And that line is, uh, existing? Yep. The nonchalance of her answer underlines just how upsetting all this really is. Remember the law she recited? And one part in particular sticks out to you. Unclassifiable sanguination. Didn't Karkat try to commiserate with you about having mutant blood or something? You know Karkat too? I keep waiting for him to fuss about the team leaders, but now he won't shut up about this thing he calls a day. Everyone was so worked up about the game, and now they're just over it suddenly. Yeah, that's your fault. I admit it. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Huh. Parker would probably have a nuclear conniption if he knew you were about to say this, but you ask her if he's a, if she's aware of his blood color. Of course I'm aware of it! What do you think I am, blind? Ahem. <clears throat> Terezi, you are blind. Holy crap. <sniffs> yes. Parker's a mutant, right? If you remember correctly, that makes him guilty of the same crime as you. Her expression turns sour, and you can tell this is something she spent a lot of time trying not to think about. You see here she avoids summarily executing you because you're friends with her friends, and sh so she'd probably avoid killing Carcat as well. And that's a good thing. Great, in fact. You cannot stress how enough how awesome that is. But doesn't that strike her as a bit hypocritical, making acceptance for her friends? Does she think that everyone else who dies at court or gets cold in their own hives deserve what they get? Just because she doesn't know them personally? It doesn't matter what I think. This is just how things are. It sucks, but it would suck a lot worse if you killed for saying so. And then who would protect Carcat? Who would protect... Hmm. Said Terezi. I can't help everyone, Cherry Cheeks. I can barely help my friends. Maybe if I took too long enough, I can change things from the inside. That's the best any of us can hope for. You guess that doesn't sound like the worst plan. In fact, it, it kind of reminds you of... Of... Who? You feel a sadness well up in your heart so fast and heavy that knocks you over into her. And without meaning to you... Zzz. Your vision is swimming. The voice is echoing in your head. But you can't pick any of them out. You just look around and... Something is watching you. Not maliciously. Not yet. J just observing from a curious distance. Not that you can do anything about it while you're clutching your head and trying to put your memories together. You've been circling around this awful familiar feeling ever since you left Earth. Drawn to it like a singularity. The closer you get, the less it makes sense. What the frick just happened? Did you just kill me right now? Is this troll hell? Troll hell? Trolls don't have an actual name for... Wait, she sees who? Here seems like an ambitious description. Sort of an ambiguous nexus of metaphysical reality. That's an awfully specific description. Has she been here before? No, but I've chased the places I can in my dreams. Great, even more shenanigans. Look around and try to get your bearings, but nothing seems to be in focus. It's all too low resolution. I will tell you it's like too bright and too dark to make sense of. You okay over there, cherry cheeks? Your blood smells really loud right now. You wouldn't know how to react to that even if you weren't having a memory-induced thought seizure. The pieces are too far apart and you can't quite put it together, but you remember. Friends? Bits of memory hitting you. Sudden flashes of joy, of violence, smiling faces, crying faces, bodies, and plans. Hope that the world can be made into a better place. What the frick are you mumbling about? If you fried you, your think pan, at least let me in on it so I can participate. You tell her what you can remember, which isn't much. Friends, sadness, dissatisfaction, <coughs> people who are deeply unhappy with the state of Alternia and faced violence from all sides, just as your new friends do today. Some of them wanted to change it from the inside, and you remember being, believing it could. But you get the sense that a lot of time has passed between now and then. It doesn't seem like Alternia has gotten any better. In fact, it may have gotten worse. It seems like whatever your friends try to do, they fail. Of course they did! What does she mean by that? 
Even in the context of, the context of your nonsense, time traveling amnesiac cover story, it's not hard to believe. Compelling idiots all have good ideas all the time. It doesn't change the fact that they're idiots. Which is why I'm on this feed where everyone else has, fa has their entrails ripped out by a swarm of drones and die like the scrubs they were. I am many things, Trey Cheek. An idiot isn't one of them. Hmm. <laughs> There's that sharp to smile. She flashes a great and pointed smile, filled with a confidence that you believe with every atom in your body. I'm pretty sure that she's not the first person to make you feel that way. Idiots or not, the friends you used to have were just as sure of themselves as, they, as she is now. And what good did it do? Honestly, you doubt with that intelligence or confidence has much to do with it at all. If you think about the drones you barely avoided at Carcat's Hive, and your brief exposure to what this planet calls a criminal justice system. For as violent and unjust as things could be on Earth, at least there was some pretext that the system existed to serve the people. Here? It's just murder. You aren't sure that the system that anyone can salvage. Her smile melts into a frown, and you really should ask what this troll's name is. Heh. <laughs> Terezi Pyro. Terezi doesn't sound particularly happy. As she slumps against a debatably extant wall and slides down into a crouch, her face is a, a, a mask of barely contained emotion. I can tell why Carcat would like you. You're very depressing. You chuckle and sit down a respectful distance away from her. You definitely don't mean to be depressing, but you have a knack for digging up drama. The hazards of forging new, forging new friendships, you guess? If Riska saw us right now, she'd shed, shed, she'd deviously laugh herself into an aneurysm. Trezzy knows Riska? That's one way to put it. We were practically sisters before she broke the rules and ruined everything. How do you know her? Oh, you know, you played some flarp, killed some kids, built felt guilty about it, then threw Vriska's mom into a volcano. Wow, you really have gotten round. Hmm. What's a mom? <gasps> oh, her question mark mouth! I love it! That's one thing she would always do in the, in the, in the, uh, Homestuck universe, is if she was very confused, she would have a question mark mouth. She is so cool when she does that. I love it. You'd think that it was just about the saddest thing you ever heard get said if you didn't already know what a Lucis was. You killed her Lucis? So she's... I explained that she's messaging me. Ha! <laughs> Terezi is laughing, but it doesn't sound like any laughter you've ever heard. I can't freaking believe it! They can't think it's her own crap out in time for me to have my own identity crisis? What if she thinks anything supposed to be fine between us just now because... Want no secret cherry cheeks? Might as well add another one to the pile, you say. <coughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Sounds like me every day. <sighs> I never have and I don't- now I don't think I ever will. Wow. That's bleak. You guys are sorry? It's not your fault. You haven't told me anything I didn't already know. Her lips are trembling as she reaches behind her and pulls out a box of chalk? Then pulls removes a red box. You think this is a weird time for artistic expression, but... Oh, she's eating it. Yeah, that's right. One thing about her, she loves the taste of chalk. The red ones taste like cherry to her. Tracy offers you a piece, but you don't want, don't want to be rude, but you also don't want to eat chalk. She shrugs and crunches on it like unshelled lobster. I guess you have to take that in stride. The more important thing is that Terezi is inconsolably sad, which sucks because you're the only person in a position to console her. Uh, let's give her a distraction. You keep out a mournful sigh. Alternia has a meat grinder fine-tuned to pulverize anyone who tries to gum up the works. Maybe there's something to be done, but you don't think either of you are going to be the ones to do it. Yeah. Why bother, right? <clears throat> She's probably doing fine without me anyway. When you look over at her, she, you, she, she's doing her best, very best to hide her tears. That's no good. You may be lost in the cynical ennui of political burnout, but that doesn't mean you can just sit by and watch your new pal descend into abject disarray. What you two need is a distraction. 
What you need is a clown. You grab Charlie's hand and think the happiest, honkiest thoughts you can muster, and just like that, we're with Gamzy. <laughs> You're right there in the living room of your dear friend Gamzee. What a sight for sore eyes is this jovial cut up of a drug addled juggalo. What the frickin' mother frick? The comical slowness he dive bombs away over from you over his catch into a pile of horns. A chaotic honk of cacophony sends Gamzee into a chorus of screams. You love Oterezi. <laughs> Smell that? How could you possibly think about the crushing impossibility of making the world a better place if this fellow's over here acting such a fool? Your friend is unwavering as Gamzee clambers back up to his feet. That was a righteous mother freaking miracle which just got all up and did in front of me. Got me scared honkwise right into the horn pile, my brother. Real good thing I'm tripping the fire quite on Tastic right now. Otherwise, a pump biscuit may have flipped that turned sideways hard enough to make me be all violent on mother fricker. His smell is nothing if not cordially unhinged. Hey, Gams. <clears throat> Terezi? Well, frig me all situationally up. What to do, my sister? It's do too much. Shh. Crap, man. Some bad news to hear. Well, I'm looking all up at you, motherfuckers. You seem hellaciously burdened. Like in the soul, what we have. You agree that you all do have souls, probably. That's the answer he was looking for, right? If I have a soul, it's tart to see the stuck on the bottom of a ground pressure covering. You mean a shoe? Whatever. I don't know what you two clothes have planned for it down your think planners for tonight. But if it's the world, if the world's got you. Well, how'd you weary eyed? He thinks maybe you should be getting up. Didn't have some think pans, little bits of pie made of pans, my man. That's not a bad idea. What better distraction from the dystopic nightmare of alternative than the warm, comforting embrace of hallucinogenic drugs? Trezzy seems momentarily unsure, like the sensible part of her is desperately begging her to do literally anything else. Frick it. She slapped down onto the couch with determination, sinking it into it like a sack of disillusioned potatoes. That is directly the noise I like to hear. Gamzee slithers down next to her and puts an arm over Terezi's shoulder. She tenses up but doesn't push him away. What about you, Miracle Themester? Or Themster? You wanna, you wanna be getting all in with this? She bats sitting next to him with a delightful grin. I think she feel the same tug of reason Terezi felt. But you'll be damned if you pretend to have more sense than a lawyer. Besides, you're having a hard time imagining anywhere you'd rather be than the, arm, than the arms of a fragrant clown. He put his arm around your shoulders as you sit and try to make yourself comfortable. Now, ain't this just the coziest motherfucking snuggle flesh there ever was? You can see Terezi sniff at an open, half empty Fago bottle before taking a big swig. Pass me stuff to that, some of that wicked elixir, my sister. Gamzee takes his own demure sip, gargling as he sucks from the bottle. By the time pa he passes it to you, you're pretty sure it's more backwash than Fago. Which is still more Fago than none. Yes. It is, without a doubt, the most vile combination of taste and viscosity you've ever put your put into your body, but hey, let you know I'm not thinking about politics. As you toss the empty bottle into the ground, already lost to a superfight haze, glance over at your new pal Terezi. She doesn't look happy, but at least she doesn't look sad. Goal accomplished, you guess? Ah! <laughs> oh, nice! And she's in the Lemon Snout Boxers! That's a throwback to, like, a long time ago in the original Homestuck comic where she more or less drank so much uh, Red Pop Fago she passed out and fell asleep in boxers and then as soon as she woke up her blindness was healed because she went to somebody in the dream world and oh that's spoilers for those who hadn't read it <laughs> sorry <laughs> well that was Terezi's route and y'all know I love that that crazy little teal blood 
I swear, if I were to literally look at Terezi in real life, if she actually existed in real life, me and her would have like the same body type, I guess, except we'd both be short. I'm five foot eight, and she's probably what five six. But anyway, that was that was Terezi's route, and I can't wait for the next ones to come out. I'm hoping it's going to be Nepeta and Tavros, so we have like double the animal lovers. That'd be awesome. Or we could have Aradia and Solix. Because we're getting pretty close to meeting the Violets and the Fuchsia Bloods, Aridin and Fefri. But we don't know what pumpkin has that all wound up in their little mixing pot. So I'm going to get on out of here and wait for the next uh, chapter to drop. <laughs> if y'all like this one, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button with a big old bibbity bobbity boop. And I'll see you all in the next chapter. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends. Jeez, now I need to really go for some Faygo now. In the last chapter, I got, like, really thirsty for milk, and now I want Faygo.